Shirley, uh, there are no words, Shirley, for, for what has happened here. Uh, I am trying to feel your pain, but I certainly have no concept of what you're going through right now. All I can say is that my thoughts and prayers are with you and your family. Um, you were in court today, I understand. Can you give us your sense of what it was like to be in this overflow courtroom and watch this and take a look at the suspect? What were your feelings and thoughts that ran through you, Shirley? Well, I was, um, it was the first time I had seen him because we still haven't watched any media or read anything. And uh, I was shocked. I was shocked to see him. I was shocked to see how composed he seemed and I also was surprised that there's nothing we can do about that hair um, it's offensive it's I, I just that really bothered me and uh, I, I, I know he was wearing a helmet when Rebecca had to look at him but uh, and that's good because that hair is scary and uh, yeah I, I don't I don't know what to think about him other than that I wish he had never been born. So what you're saying to me is that you find his hair offensive, that it's a reminder of of the horror and it's a reminder of his, um, the character that he allegedly masqueraded as, and you feel out of respect to the victims and their families, they should shave his head. Is that, is that, I don't want to misinterpret what you're saying, Shirley, but is that what you're saying, essentially? That would suit me fine. Mm -hmm. I understand that you're speaking now, that, that at the first hearing, you were not there, you were withdrawn, you were obviously in shock and in mourning, and that now you're speaking out as a form of therapy, which sometimes works, and I think that... Um, it makes sense that you might try to do that now. Is is that correct? Are you speaking now because you think that it, that it helps you process the, the, the unimaginable? No. That's not correct. Okay. T tell us then. I'm speaking out because Rebecca, if Rebecca, if someone that Rebecca ever met, which would then be a friend of hers, had been killed in that theater... Rebecca would have stood up and spoken out at every opportunity against whatever contributed to her friend dying. And for my daughter and for her memory and her bravery, her years of service, a lifetime of good, I'm going to do that for her. I'm going to make sure that everybody knows that, first of all, she stood up and and looked death in the eye, she knew what was about to happen, and she was that way in life, and she would not have just rolled over. Who do I blame? Who do I blame for something that's so random and bizarre and senseless? I don't know. Who's, who's liable? Who should have been aware? Who should have been more... Uh, security conscious, who should have made sure that my daughter and all the people in that theater, not just nine, all the people in that theater could go and pay their money and sit and be entertained. I don't know who to blame. My daughter's gone. My one and only daughter, the one that I thought would be with me until I die and take care of me and love me. And I loved her. And that's over. There's a big loss in the world, and not just Rebecca. Everyone in that theater that died, those were all great people, and everyone who's injured and their families who now have to deal with that forever, the, those were great people. The only bad person in the whole place was the one that had a gun.